Float Targ, our friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again it's time for another Orc Mode workout, and today was Dynamic Effort Bench Press Day. But a quick reminder for those of you who watch these videos, please remember to click like down below. We would be greatly appreciated. But let's get over to the training. A um, few changes. Of course, we're keeping with the theme of working on more range of motion on everything, doing tens. Uh, so I decided to do something different today on my speed bench. I've decided I'm not going to do it as touch and go trying to get the stretch reflex. I'm going to start pausing on my speed benching. You know what? I've built elite squats and deadlifts. I'll speed work all of it from a dead stop. Bench is always my worst lift. I actually want to see if I personally respond to pausing. And you know what? I felt like I got really good bar speed on this speed work. Uh, I mean, we could decide based on the footage as I get a couple sets in, but I think it's arguably faster than it has been when I try to use a stretch reflex. All right, following through with really good lockouts. Uh, and yeah, I'm running a lot of chain weight here. So we're running 88 pounds of chains. Uh, and again, close grip because again, I'm going to just close grip bench. I'm tired of messing with wider grip. I never get it equal to my close grip. It's never caught it. And all it does is inflame my shoulders. So you know what? I'm just going to overdevelop my triceps and my delts. And we're going to work everything on close grip. So again, it's going to be triceps, triceps, triceps. Now, that's a point that come up, came up, and I should probably address this. Someone had asked me, I think yesterday or something in the comments, hey, you know, how long do you think it's going to take you to fix your tricep weakness? Well, number one, my triceps regressed. The one thing I noticed when I went to wider grip benching, and I tried to mess with that variation of the JM press, trying to do it like JM Blakely does instead of the way I had been doing it before. Between that combination, my triceps got both smaller and weaker. I am not as strong at tricep exercises. I lost triceps because I deprioritized them technically, trying to work on all of the wider grip benching and incline benching. I lost tricep. And as far as a tricep weakness goes, I think structurally, for me, triceps are going to be my bench weakness probably for the rest of my life. So if someone says, how long will it take for you to fix your tricep weakness? Never. I will probably have to focus on triceps if I want my bench to go up five pounds every single time I want it to increase for the rest of my life. Triceps are going to have to be a priority for me. Because again, especially with me close gripping, especially with my arm lengths, everything else, I'm going to have to just hammer triceps. They're going to have to get a lot bigger and I'm going to never be able to back off on that. So if that's going to be most likely uh, my limiting factor on benching forever. And it doesn't mean we don't work on the other stuff. It doesn't mean we don't care about pecs and delts and lats and, and upper back and all these other things. But I have a feeling that triceps are going to be my weak link. So I'm going to have to prioritize them. So again, all my pressing is going to be close grip. But I was very happy with the way the speed work felt today. All right, very happy with it. Uh, I was going to start listening to music when I train again, by the way. But my mp3 player that was supposed to be here two days ago somehow amazon has had a delay getting it to me in transit so i don't even have it yet hopefully i'll have it later today and i'll have some music um also i think i'll probably address later too i started drinking coffee again yesterday after nine months caffeine free uh, i felt like i got all the benefits i needed from it you know i got my sleep back on point uh, i'd cut it out to maximize sleep that was it that was the only reason and even drinking the coffee yesterday, I managed to get nine hours of sleep between, between my normal biphasic sleep I do. I got nine hours. Right? I probably can't drink the amounts of coffee that I used to drink. I used to drink three full French presses, strong, like tar strength coffee, black, black coffee every morning. Uh, so I'll probably just limit myself to one French press and maybe repress it a second time without adding any more coffee to it. I want a hair more. One good, strong French press full every morning. And, you know, we'll see what it does in my training. And with me cutting right now, being uh, desensitized to caffeine might be pretty useful. But the speed bench went good. Eight sets of three. Chin-ups. I still haven't quite dropped all the water from my deload week and diet break. Someone asked me in the comments, well, what, what do you eat on those, those five days? I eat a lot of pizza. And that's why my water goes way up. I'm very sensitive to sodium. So I gain a bunch of water. And I've done this multiple times through my cut, and I've still dropped 23 pounds. 
So, uh, so for the record, it hasn't impeded me. I've still continued to get leaner. People are noticing I'm getting leaner. I'm noticing I'm getting leaner. Again, I've got a shirt on right now, but I see at this point a very visible difference when I look in the mirror in the morning. Okay, it's, it's there. We have a ways to go. I am probably going to drop 18 more pounds and then I'll bulk and cut. So I'll continue to get leaner after that, but I'm probably going to want to get down to 200 pounds. Right? We're going to get down to 200 pounds. I started the cut at 241. And then I will bulk and cut 200 to 210. So 200 will not be the limit because I'm going to just lean bulk, clean bulk, you know, and then cut again over and over and over inside that 10 pound window will probably be what I do. But because I'm holding the little extra water, the chins are hard. But what did I say last time? You know, what? I'm going to start doing these from a bottom position pause. I want to take every rep to the bottom, come to a complete stop, use no momentum. And it's going to be my bottom range of motion. Right. So I'm trying to just come to a stop. I'm not trying to pause for a long time. I just want to come to a complete stop for what my range of motion is that my shoulders and everything allow for. Right. And then try to come up and it's harder. So I managed to get three sets of eight with the 25 pounds a day. As I drop the rest of the water, this will hit 10 reps, right? Again, you guys can do the math, you know, and say, okay, if he drops, you know, eight to 10 more pounds body weight, because I've already dropped seven pounds uh, of the 15 that I put on with the water, but I've already dropped seven of it. The next will drop over the next week, and then I'll be back to losing weight, and I'll go down to that 218, and then I'll probably down to 215, 212, whatever. So as it goes down, that'll turn into 10s real quickly from that hang position for me. And I want to do that. I'm going to just quit cheating on them. And you know what? That narrow grip, my biceps are destroyed from doing that. If coming down to, to my full range of motion of what I'm capable of doing with my shoulders. Uh, and again, I still do my dead hangs every day, so I'm working on all of that. And my shoulders feel great, by the way, right now. No inflammation. But, uh, you know, so I, but I want to build that up. I want to build it up from that hang position for me and just keep going up. And when I can get to 10 successfully, we get three sets of 10. We'll add a little bit of weight, two and a half pounds each time. Right? Like little micro jumps up. I didn't want to drop under 25, though, because I know I'll be back to 10 with that. And I haven't done it at 10 with the dead hangs like that, though. But that's going to be the goal. And then we'll build on it from there as we've been doing. And of course, as body weight goes down, they'll get easier. Uh, but the long term, and I set a crazy goal, I want to be able to do like 10 reps with 90 pounds. Now, I'm going to have to put a lot of work into that. But I think that's something impressive to work towards. Just like when I said, hey, I'm going to get to that 600 squat, and I did. I said, before, I'm going to get to a 500 good morning, and I did. All these different things, right? But I like to have some non-big three strength goals. Gives me stuff to work towards and to get more well-rounded. I'm going to have to do a lot of biceps work to get there because my biceps limit my chin-ups. Oh, the incline. So we're messing with, again, close grip with the buffalo bar so it adds another inch. The stretch at the bottom is tremendous. Uh, the weight that I tried last time with this, I got three sets of nine. We got three sets of ten this time. It was challenging, but not as hard as the nines were. So I'm getting used to this lift. Uh, I'm going to see if I can bump it two and a half pounds next time. We'll microload it up. Again, chasing range of motion. Weird. I'm basically trying to get the longest ranges most of motion possible, at least from a hypertrophic perspective, because some exercises, there's not always a benefit to adding certain ranges of motion. But we are trying to do full range of motion exercises, again, within the limits of my, my structure. So trying to find ways to add range of motion and build my 10 rep maxes up, basically, on all my supplemental work. Again, chasing body composition, because that's what I need. I'm gonna have to have better body composition if I wanna be competitive at my height, weight, and do what I wanna do. I'm gonna have to basically be the most stacked guy in my class. All right, that's how you break records. That's how you break records. I need to be lean with, with more muscle, technically, than the guys I'm trying to beat. So body composition is going to be an ultra high priority. So outside of my max and speed work, everything's geared towards it. So the rows, I decided to pull the plate. I messed with those with a deficit, and I realized it's not really adding range of motion for me. It just makes me bend over more. But using the cambered bar is potentially giving me a little more because my scapula determined my, my limit, right? I don't have the scapular ability and structure to actually touch my chest with that bar. I can't even do it on a bench, like press down. I can't physically get it to touch. 
because my scapula retract, but I can let my scapula determine the range of motion here rather than the bar hitting my chest. And I feel like I get about an inch or so out of it. And again, I can tell when I'm fatigued, I can't quite get as high. So I'm trying to just explode into it and then my scapula when they touch, that's it. That's my range of motion. So again, trying to just explode and instead of hitting the chest, I just let the range of motion of my body be the limit. And again, trying to keep these as strict as possible. I notice on the last set though, around that last rep or so, that's when we get fatigued. I managed to get 11 though. So I got 11 reps on the last set. So what do we do? We'll, we'll add two and a half pounds next time. Overhead press. I had someone chime in and they were so rude about it that, that again, I banned them. They're like, oh, you're not locking out. You're not. It's like, all right, guys, I'm going to explain this again because of the way my shoulder position works. And I know some people don't understand biomechanics. I do not have good overhead mobility. I am working on it as hard as I possibly can. I literally do dead hangs for a minute and a half every single day using my body weight. It's a true dead hang. I do 30 seconds three times a day, seven days a week, doing stuff for my rear delts, doing different stretches and movements. I cannot lock completely straight over my head. So because I can't do that, the elbows don't lock either because if the elbows were to lock, I'm in a slight incline position. I'm not perfectly 90 degrees up and down. So that is as far as I can go before the bar would drift up in front of my foot. So if the elbows fully lock, the bar throws forward and I would lose the bar. So I'm just exploding as hard as I can. And I mean, I could, I could do this with an empty bar. I should probably do really fast reps on camera later. I forgot to do it today to demonstrate this so that people will understand. Uh, it's, it's not gonna work. And if I show you from the side, you'll understand that if I, if, try, if I try to lock any further, I would just lose my balance and the bar would dump forward because it would be an incline pinch. <laughs> So I'm doing the best I can with it. Now I can lock better with a wider grip because my shoulder mobility is better, but here's the thing. We're coming back over to trying to train the triceps, right? We're trying to push the triceps. So I need the close grips. It's a longer range of motion. I can move a heavier weight more total inches with the closer grip. So even though technically I'm not quite getting the elbow lock, my total range of motion that the bar is moving, that my joint is moving in the shoulder joint, right is longer it's several it's a couple inches more total range of motion than the wider grip even though the elbows i can lock with it and i can handle a heavier weight it's real easy on my shoulder joints so again i'm i'm overhead pressing as a bench accessory okay so again doing the best that we can but i did go up two and a half pounds on that today and i got like 11 reps or something on the last one so we'll go up again next time Snatch grip high pulls. Um, I'm only going to do these on upper body days, which means I need to add laterals back in, which I did. So the game plan has been to start with the really lightweight and to work on getting as high as I can on these, getting much higher so that I'm hitting the delts harder. And it hits my delts much, much harder with less weight. And when I was doing 225 with those half reps, my delts get hammered harder with this lighter weight. And, and we know biomechanically why that is. So I've had to check my ego on it. And I'm focusing on doing that. Well, I'm doing little two and a half pound jumps. Uh, but I need to go more because these were too easy today. I got like 12 reps on the last set. I realized, okay, I'm adapting to this. I'm learning the movement. I just need to, I need to up the weight a little quicker. As long as I can maintain this range of motion where it gets up to my upper chest. Right? As long as we can do that, we're good. But the weight's a, a little too light. I probably should go up to something like 155 or whatever. This was like 142 and a half. And I did 140 yesterday so why why am i only going to do it the two days now i need that training slot for other lower body stuff i probably need to start doing really long range of motion good morning for something with that slot i feel like my low back needs the extra work i feel like my erectors my entire erectors need the extra work so just like we're doing the really long range of motion rdls where i'm stopping like an inch or two from the floor now uh, I need to come in and maybe do some safety bar, Cambridge bar, good mornings, where I go deep, deep, deep and adjust my stance to get the longest range of motion possible. And I need that slot. So again, I won't be doing 12 sets of those a week now. It'll just be six. So I'll add laterals back in to make up the difference for the, the upper back and the, the delts. For basically for my side delts and, and upper traps and everything. All right. Minor snafu last time. I did my plate math wrong. I completely zombied out somehow. And people were like, oh, that weight's really low. You know, they were kind of clowning it but then if you look at the math i called this weight 75 last time 
you guys see the problem with that? Those are two 10 pound plates on each side. Those rogue blacks are 10 pounds. The rogue whites are 10 pounds. That's 85. I called it 75. Same thing, I took those 10s on the side and replaced them with fives and called it 65. It was 75 on the strip curls. Uh, I don't know why I did that on last upper body day, but I corrected the math this time. Uh, these were challenging though. And I can't really increase the weight on these yet because these are everything I have. So my goal is going to be, I want to see if I can get that little more range of motion as far as getting it a little further behind my head with this weight. So rather than try to increase the weight further, I want to try to focus on, on a little more range of motion with this weight. And then when I can get past 10 reps, then we can add more. But these were pretty much 10 rep maxes. I didn't feel like I had a rep left in the tank on any of these. My triceps were just lit. Uh, and so, you know, I had someone say, hey, you could borrow my easy bar. I have an easy bar. You can see it, you can see it over there sitting in the, the thing, in the holder. The easy bar on these shreds my shoulders up. Like, my shoulders hurt from the easy bar on this. The straight bar is easier on my shoulder joints. It feels good. It doesn't hurt it. So that's why I'm using this bar. And yeah, I'm doing a, a little bit wider of a grip for the same reason. It allows me to get a little bit of shoulder extension, get that long head involved on these laying extensions, get it behind my head without it hurting my shoulders. So again, not everyone gets a, bit, a benefit from the easy bar. I don't own these, right? And I, I've always done better with the straight bar on this exercise, even in the past, because I've, I've hit this on camera with, again, UK, so 60 kilos, so not quite 135, because it's 20 kilo plates. I've done 10 reps of 130 on these before on camera. I need to get back to that. I mean, this is quite a bit less, but again, I'll use this as a serious exercise. Uh, and if it starts stalling because I want to keep it in, I can throw chains on for a variation and then come back to straight weight. But again, finishing my triceps, because we do all this closed grip work, and again, we'll do a lot of it with chains and stuff too uh, as we start to stall. So again, I want to get I want to get the strength up on that lift. Again, I need my triceps to grow. So all my pressing is closed grip. And then we do the, the laying extensions to finish off and to get a little bit more long head. All right, the strict curls. This is actually 75 pounds, not 65. These are hard for sets of 10. Doing the full range of motion, coming all the way up, getting again that shoulder extension involved. Now, I had someone, some people say, well, my biceps are stronger. Well, they might be. They might be. Uh, but your curls might be stronger, but it doesn't guarantee that the biceps are. If I have longer forearms and you technically, my biceps have to work harder. So I don't know, but the person, I know the regular poster said that last time, and he might be right. His biceps might be bigger and stronger than mine. They very well could be. It's not like I have the most impressive biceps in the world. You know, I am more known for my lower body strength, right? But I know I need the biceps. That's why we're doing these. And again, I want my chin-ups to go up, which can be a main bicep builder. These were hard though. I mean, the last, doing these with this longer range of motion instead of just focusing on the peak contraction with like a cheat searcher, I'm going to admit this, this is hitting my biceps harder. And it's doing it harder with 60 less pounds on the bar. Okay, again, check the ego. But what are we doing? We are doing the full range of motion of the bicep, no cheating. And so again, with a strict curl, I would say though, if, if you are going to compare strength, at least compare apples to apples, Strict curl means your butt and your head have to be against something behind you. So my glutes and my head do not break contact with the rack. They are in full contact. So you either have to have it against a wall or against a post or a pole or your power rack. Uh, so that is a strict movement. There, There is no way for me to cheat on that. I am locked against it. And again, my glutes and my head do not come out of contact for any of the reps. So I'm actually laying into it to ensure that, to make it a true strict curl. Now, I might mess with some cheat curls later trying to do this range of motion, but I wanted to mess with the strict curls for a while, and they're humbling. And and you guys would be surprised how light a weight you can do, especially someone like me, though, with long forearms and long arms. This, this is, again, very humbling. It's a very humbling exercise. But you know what? My biceps felt like they were just ripping apart on these. They're just, just like my triceps get really hammered with those extensions. My biceps get hit super hard on these. Uh, I would say out of the different lifts that I've messed with for my biceps, the different types of curls and stuff, these seem to hit my biceps the hardest in terms of just what I feel, from what I feel. Chin-ups are a close second though, right? It just feels different. 
And then I finished off with some laterals. Now I'm trying to do these higher and I'm leaning forward. People say, didn't you say to be careful of turning your pinky up in the past? I did if you're more upright. I am leaning forward quite a bit. And if you lean forward quite a bit, you can get away with that more and it will hit your rear delts harder. Because I am doing this. I don't, I'm not worried about building front delts with this. I do so much front delt work and overhead pressing. I really want all three heads of my delt to get hit and I want my upper traps. I want all of that area to get finished off with these. And by turning the pinky up with a little bit of forward lean, it does hit the rear delts harder. And, and that's the whole idea. That is specifically what I'm doing there. But again, if you turn the pinky up, you need to be leaned forward quite a bit if you don't want it to potentially crush your glenoid, the glenohumeroid joint. You have to be leery of that. But again, if you just position yourself right, it is safe to do. And I can't do as many reps now that I'm going up higher like that with the pinkies up. I'm, I'm failing at like 11 to 12 reps. And again, it's fine because these are the only dumbbell, full dumbbells that I have. I've got to use kettlebells if I need a different weight. So it's fine. We're, we're actually at a respectable rep range. And if I can get these up with that same form to 15s to failure, my, my shoulders will have grown. So again, I need these to finish that off because I'm only going to be doing six sets of snatch grip high pulls per week. And this will give me 12 total sets for the complete shoulder. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.